Hi YouTube, um, I've been doing lots of videos recently just about my various kind of collections and things. Um, so I collect a lot of like 80s toys mainly but I also collect lots of um, sort of natural objects and things like that. So what I'm going to show you tonight is my um, animal skulls collection. So if you just have a look here, this is my sort of one of my cabinets of curiosity sort of thing. Um, but I'm just going to show you the animal skulls down here. Um, check out my other videos for things like fossils, minerals, sea pods, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, right, this is just a very quick look really to show you some of the things. So um, here is a um, cat skull, this is a lynx skull, um, some I buy on eBay, some people give to me. Um, this is a beaver that um, somebody had a friend in Russia and he managed to get a beaver skull for me. Uh, he'd actually shot it in the head to eat it, um, so there was a hole in the head that I had to repair. <laughs> uh, I don't think he realised that I wanted it as a skull for display purposes. Um, this is a fox skull. Uh, here's a badger um, with the ridge on the top, very distinctive. And badgers have like locking jaws, so you can't remove the bottom jaw, it's locked on. Um, here's another badger. So I think this one with the bigger ridge is a male. This one with a smaller ridge is a female. Um, this is a juvenile fox skull. Um, this is an ornate horned frog skull. Um, I keep lots of unusual kind of reptiles and amphibians and uh, also like uh, weird insects and things like that as well and small mammals. Um, and obviously every so often an, a pet will die obviously because I keep them for the whole of their life um, so just as an example this uh, is a chameleon skull here Yemen's chameleon um, I kept and bred these uh, they would lay like 60 eggs at a time and I'd hatch them all out but um, the adults only live for between two and three years very short-lived um, so that's is there's no point kind of throwing them away it seems like a waste so I keep things and prepare them and then I can keep them in my cabinet. This is a an old crested gecko um, skeleton. Um, there's a few birds here, duck. I think I collected that in Australia. Various sort of uh, crows, pigeon. Uh, I think there's a woodpecker skull in there. Pheasant. Um, and then we've got uh, I think this is a red kite skull that somebody gave me. This is a, a gannet skull. I actually found the dead gannet on a beach. Uh, everybody who collects animal skulls has got a few grisly stories to tell. <laughs> um, and I'm no different. Um, so this gannet was on the beach, yeah, and I had to try and remove the head of the gannet because a gannet is a pretty big bird. You don't want to be trying to carry it down the beach. So I was trying to <laughs> sort of lop the head off of this dead gannet. Um, and try not to be seen by passing um, families with their children and things like that. Um, but where there's a will, there's a way, and now I have a very nice gamut skull to show for it. Um, let's just slide this door over. So in this side we've got a crocodile skull that I bought. That's a lovely specimen. Um, this is a um, Bosque Monitor skull. Again, that's an ex-pet. Um, blood python skull, that's an expert, it looks like one of the teeth might have fallen out there, I have to stick that back in. You can see they've got lots of um, recurved teeth there, all facing backwards. Um, so we've got little things here like a uh, weasel and a stoat, um, various small skulls, so you've got like shrews down in that first box, uh, voles. That sort of thing. This is a rat skull. Uh, this is a guinea pig. Uh, this is a hedgehog. Uh, this is. Uh, I'm trying to remember what this is. <laughs> this one's a rabbit, anyway. I think that might be a squirrel. Uh, this is a quokka. Uh, again, collected in Australia, that one. Uh, this I found in Australia, but I don't know what it is. Um, this is a kangaroo skull from Australia. Uh, it's brilliant in Australia because obviously there's a lot of um, 
a lot of roadkill kangaroos and people pick them up and take them home to eat them barbecue them <laughs> um, we met quite a few people like that that had dead kangaroos with kind of spare heads and things um, here's a um, dead dog this one I found in Cyprus and brought that home with me um, and I've got a dead goat skull that one again that was uh, found in Cyprus there's a um, deer skull at the back there with some antlers on it. This is a, uh, what have we got? We've got a wild boar, this one, and that one's a warthog. And then this one uh, is a pony skull. Um, so I was just... <laughs> Sorry about all the cobwebs, by the way, in here, because uh, I just leave them, because I think it adds to the whole sort of old museum look. I quite like it. Um, but yeah, what I was saying about people having strange stories that collect skulls, um, the pony skeleton that I just showed you there, um, I actually found another pony skeleton where I went on a sort of beach holiday with some friends, and I was walking way past the beach along the sort of bottom edge of a cliff and I smelt this kind of dead animal smell and I got a bit excited because when you're on a beach you kind of think oh it could be like a a dead um, seal or a um, dolphin or so, you know something with a really kind of interesting skull uh, and as I got closer and closer I realized that it was a, um, a dead pony um, so I started by taking the the head of the pony and I took it back to the house where we were staying and um, and everybody was like what have you got and I showed them this um, dead pony head which still had a bit of skin on it as you know it was all dried out but it uh, still had a bit of flesh left on it and I don't mind this you know I'll just boil them down in a pan or something and remove the excess kind of flesh and then um, you can get little beetles and things to clean it up or just leave it outside in a tub with holes in and um, let some flies go in and they'll, uh, you know, the maggots will clean the skull for you. Um, but yeah, I actually ended up going back and getting the rest of the pony and bringing the whole thing home with me and I've actually made it all up. like It's like a big jigsaw, so I've got an entire pony skeleton uh, in my studio and I've also got an entire cow skeleton um, because uh, a conservation worker that I knew um, had a dead cow on his land and he said if you come and collect all the um, bones for me uh, and put them in bin bags then you can keep the skull so I did collected this amazing cow skull with horns and everything um, took it home and then just on the off chance that a couple of years later I said to him Oh, it's a shame we didn't keep that, uh, you know, the, all the rest of the bones, because I would have really liked to have made it up and have a whole um, cow skeleton. And the guy said, oh, it's funny you should say that, because I kept all of the bones in, in the bin bags under my hedge. <laughs> um, so he gave the bones back to me, and uh, I made it all up into an amazing um, full-size cow skeleton. Um, although, when I first made it, I stuck it all together with a glue gun, which seemed pretty kind of sturdy at the time. And, but then I'd moved it into my conservatory, and uh, one really hot day, we went shopping, did the food shop, came home, and all of the glue gun glue had melted, and the whole cow skeleton was down on the floor, just in a heap of bones again. And I, but I was determined, because I really loved it, I was determined to remake it. Um, but obviously next time I remade it, I screwed it all together and wired it all together. Um, so there's no chance of uh, it falling apart again. So I thoroughly recommend that if you're thinking about making a big skeleton. Do it properly the first time, don't cut any corners. Uh, it will save you so much effort in the long run. <laughs> um, Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know, like, uh, it's an unusual kind of selection of skulls, I suppose, but, um, I mean, I'm an artist, so I quite often, you know, will use these as inspiration and, and do drawings and things with them. They're good reference material. Um, and I also like kind of uh, designing strange creatures. 
Um, so it's quite useful, you know, looking at this sort of thing, seeing the skin textures and that kind of thing, um, the bone textures, really useful because I also sculpt um, strange creatures as well. Um, so check out my other videos. Um, if you like all these kinds of collections, you'll see lots more um, on my channel. Uh, and if you want to subscribe, anything new that I collect or post up, um, you'll get to see it quicker. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.